welcome back to the shop today. Just went to the dentist, can't really feel the side of my face here. So we do have a uh, new little package from a company that builds stuff in the United States, Worldly Custom Fabrication. So let's get into this big giant box here. I'm excited about it, let's tell you what it is. Okay, this is a pretty big box. We'll get to what's inside. I already took all the packaging out. That's all the packaging. It's empty. No, it's not empty. Got uh, something there. Got some stickers. The Wardley catalog. Let's open this up and see what it is. Okay, you'll have to excuse the mess. I got stuff all over the uh, place for another project I'm working on, but let's unwrap this. It's very well packaged. Tell you what, this is a, uh, not even exactly sure what it's called, maybe a front valence delete. I'm not sure how many of these are even in existence, but this is gonna look sick. So let's see if we can show you guys how to put this bad boy on. Okay, so you might be asking, what is it? Where does it go? What does it do? Well, this lower valence here, that plastic piece that runs all the way across the front. This is what it looks like from the side. That piece, a lot of times it rubs your tire, it doesn't rub mine, but uh, kind of just hangs down. It's not a very clean look. Yes, another truck is disgusting. But that nice WC fab piece in the front, this is gonna end up going on like that. And it's gonna delete that lower front valence, that plastic piece. Now, obviously I've never done this before. I have no idea what tools I'm gonna need, etc. So we will learn along the way together. But every uh, tool or every issue or bump in the road I encounter, I'll make sure to document with you guys. Hopefully it'll be nice and smooth. And uh, let's get right into it. Okay, so I did review it briefly. Some of the tools I think we're gonna need, uh, not 100% sure, you're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket, a 15 millimeter socket. I do have a 10 millimeter and a 15 millimeter ratcheting wrench. Got a three H drive ratchet here. Um, might need some zip ties, really unsure at the moment. Uh, might need a Christmas tree puller or a panel puller. Some snips to cut your zip ties. Might uh, be handy if you have one of one of these. Um, uh, three eighths inch drive Milwaukee, right angle. So uh, let's get into it. Okay, so we are under the truck. This is the uh, driver's side. I was able to remove this with the Milwaukee. This one with the Milwaukee, these are all 10 millimeters. Um, I had to get this one with the ratcheting wrench and I'm just gonna continue to work my way around there uh work my way around and hit all of those and uh won't bore you guys to death death with that but let's get all of those off first and see what else there is left to take off okay i wanted to start on one side before i went to the other and showed you guys and what a pleasure it has been um i, I got to the point where i was probably going to take the front bumper off so i started unbolting these and then i thought well I'm not gonna give up. So I took all the 10 millimeter bolts out. I started working my way around. This one right here was a real pain. Um, I used a uh, 10 millimeter flex head ratcheting wrench, got up in there and I actually positioned myself where I had my hand inside of this uh, ring and worked it back and forth for ever to get that bolt out um working my way around got all of these out uh here i did have to take the cover off in the front to get to these i'll show you how i did that oops i have a few more to do on this side so let's see if we can get that on tape not sure how well you guys can see that not sure how much i'll be in the way but i position myself where my hand is in here like this 
and it's slow. I'm just gonna have to ratchet that sucker off a very small amount of the time, so it'll probably take me five minutes to get this thing out, and then I'll show you the rest. Okay, I'm trying to film this with one hand, so I'm really not sure how well it's gonna come out, but these clips here, um, I wasn't exactly sure how to get them out, but if you take a screwdriver and you press behind there, you swap hands here. Take a screwdriver and press behind there. You can pry it on that tab. Pop that outward. Like that. And then your stuff should pop down. Let me just position this here. I'm about to get this bad boy off. I'm going to pull it outward on this tab. So, this is off from the bottom. It is filthy. Let's get out of here and look at it. Oh, man. All right, not gonna lie. That was kind of a pain. I probably worked on that for about an hour or so. Um, did have to remove, let me shut this light off here. Kind of what it's looking like right now. I don't have the new piece in. And uh, keep in mind, I did have to remove this whirly piece, and that's because um, there were some bolts down in here that I had to get to. Um, and I actually just uh, rolled this up like that. I peeled it up, and then I was able to go straight down. Let's see if I can get that like that. So go straight down like that and get in there without scratching anything up. So there's like three bolts or like, or three or four, like one, two, three, four. And I was able to get down through there and knock all those out. So, um, did run into a couple issues. So this bracket here is loose. I was taking that bolt out with a ratcheting screwdriver or a ratcheting uh, wrench rather and the bolt bottomed out, so then my wrench was stuck. So I'm gonna work on getting that out. Okay, so we have the um, front brackets off. Uh, safety glasses, you will need safety glasses. I didn't mention that earlier. When you're working up underneath the truck, debris is probably gonna fall out all over you. Had a little bit happen to me, but I had glasses on, so. Um, this tab, after you Kind of mock up the whirly piece it hangs down a little bit so i'm just going to um that is a integrated piece so i'm probably just going to take a pair of uh channel locks i'm just going to bend that tab rearward a little bit um so you can see from the mocked up angle tab will really no longer show whereas before it was sticking out of the bottom so um let's see if we can figure out how to get this thing mounted okay i'm going to reinstall these uh factory brackets here but i'm going to flip them where the nut portion is on top like that actually i'll put it up in that like this Oops, excuse me. I'll put it up in there like this and torque it straight up in. Um, so that way I don't have to try to go down from the top because that was a total pain. So here's the bracket. I placed that bracket on top. Probably just going to hold that bracket with some channel locks and tighten it up. Zip from the top instead of trying to 
fight it with a little wrench up there. I believe I'm gonna do that with these brackets as well. And I'd put a flat blade screwdriver in there like this, prod out on them a little bit, and uh, I can take them out, flip them around. Or I'll be able to just shoot the bolt in there this way, and then uh, I'll have all my factory hardware right here, and I won't have to worry about anything hanging down. So. I'll do that for both of those so all three of them will be reversed. Coming down to where we're going to be installing this thing pretty soon. Um, these pieces on the end are actually just a hole where Christmas tree goes down into, and it's in the factory location. It's uh, that Christmas tree right there. I don't know if you can see that, but it just lines up in there like that. The other holes are for this factory captured nut. Or you can put it on like so. You just snap it in. That way you can bolt down from the top. And you'll just reuse all of your factory ones. All the location, all the factory locations. And they fit on there perfectly. Just reuse your factory 10 millimeter hardware. Okay, I'm just holding this up here. Um, I'll show you guys this part up close, but so we can go through and hand start your factory 10 millimeter hardware. And once you hand started it, you can let it hang. So we're we're getting there. We're not done yet. Um, now. This is what I was talking about, this rubber piece. I just lifted that up, uh, didn't put any stress marks in it or anything, and kind of popped it out there and kind of wedged itself into place. Uh, and then I can just go straight down there with the factory um, bolts. So we'll get those in, we'll get it tight. Start routing some wires. As I was tightening, uh, tightening those bolts from up front, it's that little cover that I had moved. Um, I realize it's probably a better idea just to come down here from the bottom and uh, gain access to them now and you can just make sure they're all tight that way. So boom, boom, boom. Now there is one here and one on the other side that I don't have in yet. So there should be six bolts all together, but I've got four in for now. And then uh, let's route some wiring. Okay, let's talk uh, wire routing because we do they're left with this loom here, and this loom will hang down, obviously below the front of your valence. So, um, there are two holes already drilled in this, uh, for whatever reason. So I just ran a zip tie through there. Um, not 100% sure on the best way to do it. Just the way that I'm gonna do it. Probably gonna be decently clean. it up tight there and let me figure out where I want to put the, the rest of this at another little bracket here or a zip tie through there and use it to help me secure the remaining portion of the loom gonna be it two zip ties there and uh iron heart should be pretty up and out of the way so you do already have the whirly fab cover like i do i want to install 
install that now. My, my brackets are already uh, centered and leveled. I want to make sure that you put these in and hand start them. And get them out. There we go. So once you put all these in, you hand start them. They are uh, four millimeter Allen heads. And we'll get all these hand started. And then we will get this thing tightened up. Okay, we get all our bolts hand started. Okay, this is what comes off of the truck, or this is what I took off of the truck. Um, I don't even think there's instructions out for this thing yet. Uh, you're gonna end up with some dirty hands. Uh, I ended up with some pinched fingers, etc. But this whole front bumper valence portion uh, is gonna come off. Um, you're gonna end up with a bunch of hardware left, a bunch of 10 millimeter hardware. Um, you're gonna end up with this bracket cover that bolts the front valence and that it goes in the front as well. So these are all the components that I took off. Um, yeah, so all in all, it took me about two hours, um, but that's with filming and everything else. So uh, it's a little bit difficult, but I think it's worth it. Let me show you what it looks like. The big reveal and the truck is filthy. Wham. Oh yeah, I think it looks really good. Actually, I think it looks uh, pretty damn awesome. Now this color is fine black. It is uh, texturized just like the WC Fab grill here. With the uh, auxiliary cooler. This is textured as well in fine black, so they match up pretty nice. Really, really cleaned up the side profile of the truck here. You don't have that ugly uh, five inch plastic piece hanging down anymore. It's a better, better view there. So. Yeah, quite a bit harder to put in than the uh, auxiliary transmission cooler cover but definitely think it looks good you guys have to let me know what you think in the comments yeah i think it looks sick huh really did awesome job designing that thing i do know they have a, a skid plate out if you guys have their newsletter it's in there as well so awesome i think it looks great let me know what you guys think in the comments okay that's it for another another episode a long night here probably uh 10 30 at night so you are going to end up with some dirty hands. This is a uh, couple hour job. Of course, I was filming and stuff. Um, I don't know if it'd be easier to maybe even take the whole front bumper off. Uh, the way I did it was kind of a kind of a pain, but it definitely worked. Um, don't get your wrench, your uh, your ratcheting wrench stuck on that one 15 millimeter bolt like I did. It'll save you a lot of heartache. So you guys will let me know what you think about in the comments, but really cleaned up that front end portion right there. I think it looks great. So that's the Whirly, Whirly Custom Fab uh, front valence delete. Um, once again, those products are made in the United States of America by awesome, uh, awesome family company. So, all right, guys, until next time, take care.